Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nana Weilugo, and I'm a third-year medical student at the Medical College of Wisconsin. I'm thankful to be here today, and I'll be presenting my research on the evolution of the general surgery resident operative case experience in the era of robotic surgery. And I have nothing to disclose. So robotic-assisted general surgery procedures continue to increase in frequency, requiring more residency programs to establish training curricula for the general surgery residents. However, in this era of minimally invasive surgery, there are concerns regarding the impact of newer technologic platforms on um, the case distribution of surgical residents, specifically its influence on open and laparoscopic cases. The objective of this study was to analyze the impact of a growing robotic case volume and establish robotic surgery training curriculum on the general surgery resident operative case experience. So the robotic surgery training curriculum at MCW was established in 2017. It consists of four phases and the residents are encouraged to log all operative cases. The first phase is focused on introducing first year residents to the robotic surgery technology through online modules and simulation exercises. And in the second phase, second year residents are exposed to more advanced skills training. Both first and second year residents participate in bedside assistant cases as part of phase three, and phase four exposes third to fifth year residents to console surgeon cases. For this study, the ACGME operative case logs of residents from 2014 to 2020 were analyzed to determine resident participation in open, laparoscopic, and robotic cases for three years prior to and three years after the institution of the curriculum. The six ACGME case categories included were alimentary tract, abdomen, endocrine, thoracic, pediatric, and trauma. From these, we also further extrapolated four gut cases as a subset of alimentary canal and intestinal, hernia, and hepatobiliary cases as subsets of abdominal cases to give us a more detailed analysis of our operative case logs. Analyses were performed of overall cases, as well as participation by case type, postgraduate year level, resident role, and institute type. ANOVA was used to analyze differences amongst these variables, both within and across each case type over the six academic years. And we defined statistical significance as a p-value of less than 0.05. The operative case logs from 77 general surgery residents were analyzed, and the residents participated in a total of 34,757 cases, of which 59.3% were open, 39.6% laparoscopic, and 1.1% robotic. Between 2014 and 2020, there was no significant change seen in the residents' number of open or laparoscopic cases. However, there was a significant increase in the number of robotic cases, which went from 18 overall cases in the 2014-2015 academic year to 201 in the 2019-2020 academic year. We saw a statistically significant increase in robotic cases when we ran the analysis based on operative case categories, institute type, and resident role. But there was no significant difference in surgical approach across the PGY levels. The operative case categories with significant increases in robotic cases were for gut, where the cases rose 1 point, from 1.1% to 5.1%, intestinal, where they rose from 0.2% to 1.8%, and hernia, where they rose from 0.3% to 8.6%. At academic institutions, we saw the robotic cases increase significantly from 0.2% to 3%, and at the VA, they rose from 0% to 2% there was no significant change seen at the community hospitals. And finally, the resident role with a significant increase in robotic cases was first assistant, where they increased from 1.8% to 9.8%, with no significant changes seen as a surgeon junior or surgeon chief. So in conclusion, this study highlights the effectiveness of a standardized robotic surgery training curriculum at increasing general surgery resident participation in, in robotic cases without detrimental effects on their participation in open or laparoscopic cases. Foregut, intestinal, and hernia cases comprise the majority of robotic resident cases. 
And as the robotic general surgery cases continue to increase, the impact on laparoscopic and open case volumes need to be carefully monitored to ensure a well-balanced resident training experience. In our next steps, we hope to continue to analyze the resident's operative case volume to ensure that an even distribution and to continue to optimize the curriculum experience based on feedback and evaluations. Thank you for your attention and the opportunity to present.